transition to the new normal, we have left others behind. We need to reimagine and redesign our educational system. With the collective effort of schools, sponsors, and TACPRO's learning management system, and core of passionate teachers, we can deliver free education and champion the cause of our students. Together, we would be able to teach, inspire, and serve, because TACPRO's believes that education is a right all children deserve. the easy way to differentiate your teaching. With Quizalyze, you can quiz your students on the skills and standards they need to know, using devices in classroom team games or at home, and analyze the results in a choice of clear, useful views, instantly showing you who needs help, what they need help with, and how every student is progressing towards mastery. Choose from thousands of interactive quizzes covering all school subjects and aligned to your state standards, including content from top curriculum providers. The dashboard enables you to benchmark your students against state averages and helps you ensure that nobody gets left behind. Students' test scores have improved 8 to 10 points from last year's scores. This is the first time that we've seen an increase of this magnitude. It's opened up that, that conversation between myself and my students. My kids pay attention to the test questions so much more. I have kids that even come before school because they just want to practice with me. I can meet with them one-on-one -on -one, or I can meet with them in a small group and for the first time they're getting the attention that they really need and the data is there instantly. Play a quiz in class today. There are no apps to install. It's easy and it's free.
we transition to the new normal, we have left others behind. We need to reimagine and redesign our educational system. With the collective effort of schools, sponsors, and TACPRO's learning management system, and core of passionate teachers, we can deliver free education and champion the cause of our students. Together, we would be able to teach, inspire, and serve, because TACPRO's believes that education is a right all children deserve. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our, the third installment of our July webinar workshop series. I'm Jim Toscano, co-founder and chief program officer of Tag Pros Education. Um, and this webinar series is brought to you by Tag Pros Children. Um, and we welcome you to Advancing Better Online Distance Learning, Designing and Implementing Online Assessment. So for July, we have already started talking about assessments as a follow-up to our June webinar workshops. Of course, this event is brought to you by Tag Pros Education and Tag Pros Children. Um, and of course, in, in, in partnership with ZQ EdTech IT Solutions, the makers of Quizalyze, the best quiz platform um, for remote or face-to-face -face classrooms. And of course, we also have our other partners who have and uh, help us reach out to more teachers. Uh, we thank the Department of Education International Cooperations Office under the leadership of Director Margarita Consolacion Ballesteros, um, Teacher Education Network under the management of Mr. Gina Luayon, and the next series of the Computer Department of Xavier School. All right, so it's a very rainy afternoon to everyone. So um, we're looking at the comments right now and yeah, we hope that you are dry and safe. Um, we are experiencing a very unfortunate times so with an earthquake early in the morning around um, uh, around or near Batangas or Mindoro and near the National Capital Region. Um, we hope that you are safe. Um, the rains have been very strong. Our monsoon, um, the monsoon has re is really showing us its power and really making it very challenging for every one of us. Um, we, we however, however, wish that everyone is safe and dry. We will proceed with our live stream right now, but if you have friends who cannot make it, if you, are, if you have colleagues, uh, colleagues who are cannot make it, please let them know that uh, we, will, uh, we still have a replay of this available on our uh, social media platforms on Facebook and on YouTube. And if you are joining us right now for the first time, welcome. For those who have been joining us since June, it's nice to see familiar faces. Please do share this in your social media network and tag your friends, tag your colleagues so that they can join us. Uh, we're very much happy because we have reached, uh, uh, reached the northern part of the Philippines where our fellow Ilocanos out there in Lawag City, in Abra, in Apayao. Thank you so much for joining us. We know that it's very stormy, very rainy, and those our um, places out there, especially in Northern Luzon. Uh, we have our friends and colleagues coming from um, Mindanao and, and the Visayas region. Thank you so much for, for joining us today. Just a quick word. Um, first off, we'd like to thank our participants who have graciously waited for their e-certificates uh, for July and 10, part one and part two webinar workshops. We have sent out all the remaining certificates for all the past webinar workshops. If you have not received yours yet, message us at our Facebook page or email at scouts at tagpros.org. Um, we have a few reminders to share about evaluation and about certificates. Um, a few, uh, well, a few weeks ago, we have actually encountered some technical problems and we apologize for that. We have already fixed it, but we need to, we want to remind our participants that um, we and, and to be fair with our live participants who are joining us right now, our uh, evaluation forms are only open for one week. And we will only honor 
um, request for certificates if you have answered the evaluation form within that one week span after our live session. We also want to, to uh, continue supporting uh, the professional development training of our teachers, but we also want to be fair with our, our dear teachers who are taking their time off to learn. So while you can still watch a Steam replay all our sessions, even past June, we are only able to give or open the evaluation and give uh, our uh, uh, certificates of participation and attendance to those who can answer the evaluation form um, within that one week's uh, one week span or duration right after the uh, the session. So I hope that you understand that. Um, we also want to make sure that we maintain our credibility as as a, as a nonprofit organization, Tag Pros Children. Um, and our goal really is to help our teachers to be to and uh, to to be able to help you hone and and equip yourselves with the necessary skills. But again, we want to remind everyone that the evaluations will be only open one week. That has been the rule, actually, what we are posting, um, and we will only be we will be only a, uh, we will be only um, looking into concerns for those. Uh, teachers or participants who have answered the evaluation form. All right, so I hope that we are able to clarify that, especially for those who are asking questions. Now, um, if you have not received your previous uh, seminar, uh, seminar certificates, please do message us on Facebook and we will graciously answer you um, uh, in, in our most and the most convenient time that we have also. All right, and of course, again, um, we want to remind you to become responsible digital citizens. As teachers, we hope uh, we hope that we practice digital citizenship. And please refrain from number one, posting unnecessary information, unnecessary information in our in our comment section, so that you can keep your 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 identities, uh, your pri uh, your information in private and safe also. Um, we want to express our gratitude to ZQ, uh, EdTech IT Solutions, because they have been sponsoring our raffle draw of five lucky participants every week. So thank you, ZQ. That means also please don't post your numbers, uh, numbers on, on, co on our Gcash account numbers on our chat. Second, we are uh, a professional learning community. So therefore, as professionals, as a uh, part of being a digital, responsible digital citizen, we remind everyone to engage with each other, to engage with our speaker and with us with utmost respect um, so that we, uh, we focus on what is being talked about. Uh, it's good to agree or disagree with all the things that are being mentioned, but let us do them in a very uh, respectful and tactful manner because after all, we are all professional teachers all right of course as the sessions would go further we expect you also to post your questions and insights and we will gladly uh we would gladly um read all your comments and even engage with your questions all right with all of that sorted let's proceed to the opening messages from our partners we are joined by mr charles wiles ceo of zq and tech it solutions who are be who are behind uh, the Quizalize online lear, uh, assessment platform, and he's here to deliver an opening an opening message to all of us. Was and I'm the founder and CEO of Quizalize. I'd like to thank you all today for taking time to learn how to use Quizalize to deliver effective online assessments. And I'd also like to thank TagPros for inviting us along to do these webinars. Now it's never been more important than today to be able to understand each of your students individual learning gaps and give them exactly the right help so that they can perform and accelerate their learning and that's exactly what we designed Quizalize to do we designed Quizalize to give you the teacher the superpowers to understand your students better than before and to personalize your teaching to each and every one i hope you'll enjoy these webinars rose is an amazing incredible trainer um, I'm sure you'll, you, you, you'll, um, you're in good hands. Um, and thank you also to Jim Toscano, who is just one of the most amazing teachers we've come across. 
Um, really great and exciting to see all the amazing learning that's going on in the Philippines right now. Thanks again and enjoy the webinars. All right, thank you, Charles, our good friend over at our over at ZQ Ed Tech Solutions, and he sends his regards all the way from London, United Kingdom. All right, so let us let's not also forget that this uh, session is co-presented or in done in partnership with the Department of Education International Cooperations Office under the leadership of Doctor or Director Margarita Consolacion Ballesteros, and she's here to give us some inspiring message as we continue with our uh, noble profession of being teachers at this time of the pandemic. Let us all listen to the message of Director Ballesteros. Good day, good afternoon, good evening to all our participants, both here and beyond the archipelago. Thank you, Jim and to your team, the Tag Pro Philippines for organizing this webinar for our teachers, our teachers who remain to be our unsung heroes. And yet we of course appreciate, we of course celebrate the teaching profession with our superheroes, the divas, the supermen and superwomen, the iron men and iron women of the 21st century, our dear teachers. This is Director Marge Ballesteros wishing you all the best in your another learning undertaking for this morning and even in the days to come. We learn and we keep learning because we cannot afford to be left behind. Dear teachers, the challenges are humongous. We face a lot of challenges. Number one, the challenge of adjusting the learning environment now that we do virtual meetings, virtual classes, or we call it our online learning, the distance learning, or even blended learning. All of these things are happening. We are pushed to because of the changing times. And we cannot even predict if COVID will still stay up to when. But we can predict what we can do as teachers because we've got the power and that's the power to think and the power to act with distance learning we have learned a lot for the past year we know that teachers are challenged but our teachers too responded to the humongous and endless challenges because the teachers love their learners as well as they do it not only for the sake of love, but for the sake of their, but of course, from their commitment and their passion as teachers. Jim, keep going. So with your team in helping our teachers, because I know the Savior community are really very supportive, not only of our brothers and sisters who are in the private sector, but more so of our brothers and sisters, our teachers, from the public schools or in the public schools thank you for helping us train our teachers and thank you for contributing to the upskilling and retooling of our 21st century teachers for the sake of our learners so good luck for another learning experience and i hope that those of you who are participating to this webinar for today will really learn and get to share it with your peers with your co-teachers and even to the kids who you teach every day so to everyone the international cooperation office of the department of education would like to wish you all the best for another learning this morning. God bless and have a good day. Thank you so much, Director Balesteros, for the inspiring and wonderful message. We at TagPros Children and TagPros Education are uh, always here to support our teachers and to deliver um, the best uh, webinar work uh, workshops uh, that we can uh, give to our teachers 
uh, both in the public and private uh, sectors of the country and even internationally. All right. I think we have reached the most anticipated portion of the webinar workshop, the GCAS raffle draw. Again, this raffle draw, I will be announcing the winners today uh, for the past, uh, for the July or part to 17 webinar, uh, July or part two webinar series for the July uh, events that we have. However, I just want to point out to everyone that our partner, ZQ EdTech IT Solutions, uh, is our, it's the, it's the reason behind our raffle draw. They have generously uh, taken over and, and they are the ones giving out the, the cash prizes. So make sure that you follow ZQ EdTech IT Solutions and, and on, on their social media platform and, and also create your own Quizalize account. The online platform, online learning platform that we uh, that uh, that we have learned about last session. All right. So for for this week, we will be drawing another five lucky participants for this week's raffle draw. However, let me take this opportunity to announce the five lucky winners or winners for the part two webinar series. So may I ask uh, everyone to see? All right. To look at your screen and congratulations to these five lucky participants. Sina Angela D. Baloloy, Neil, Joey Rowe, I'm, I'm not sure if that's correct, sorry if I, I mispronounce it wrong uh, or I mispronounce it. Neil, Joey Rowe, Y. Lagitnai, Anjanet D. Esquilona, Manilin Omanga, Rodel e. S. No, no give. Okay, one more time. Congratulations to the following: Sina Angela D. Baloloy, Neil Joey Rowe, Wyla Gitnai, Anjanet D. Esquilona, Manilin Omanga, Rodel S. Rodel S. Nugit. Congratulations to these five lucky participants uh, from our July 17, 2029, 2021 uh, event. TagPros Education will get in contact with you for verification and details on how to receive the cash prize. All right. So thank you, everyone. Now, how about today? We still have a raffle draw for today, and uh, we have a very simple instruction. Uh, watch the webinar series. Watch the webinar series right now. Complete the evaluation form on www.tagpros at the end of the session. Note. The, the evaluation for our form is still closed. So if you go to tagpros.org, you will not find the evaluation um, that we have for today's session. We will be announcing them, um, uh, opening the form later on. And follow all our social media pages on Facebook, LinkedIn, and YouTube. And one important reminder, you have to make sure that you follow ZQ EdTech IT Solutions. At the same time, create a Quizalize account. All right, you need to make sure that you create your Quizalize account. All right, so there. Um, congratulations to our winners, and we uh, and we look forward to your um, we look forward to your evaluations and to your participation for this workshop. All right, so again, um, thank you so much to our sponsor, ZQ EdTech IT Solutions. And a few other reminders, please make sure that you try out their free Quizalize uh, online learning or online assessment platform and enjoy how uh, it makes uh, online assessment much better for us teachers, especially for online or hybrid learning. Only uh, we will be announcing the five winners of this week's webinar workshop sometime next week. We are live on both Facebook and YouTube. So invite your family and friends to do the live stream or to watch a live stream so that they can also join the raffle. Only Gcash account holders are allowed to participate. So don't forget to download the Gcash app available at Google Play and Apple Store and create your Gcash account today. Oh, by the way, we just want to remind, we uh, during the raffle, we also check if you have your Quizalize account. And unfortunately, uh, there are some of us who joins the raffle without oh, uh, without trying Quizalize or opening the Quizalize account. Uh, Quizalize is, uh, or ZQ EdTech IT Solutions is our sponsor 
for for our raffle draw and it's very important that we show some love to them by creating your own Quizalize um, account and trying out their platform also. All right, I think we're now ready to go to our session for this afternoon. Let me introduce our speaker for today. Mr. Uh, Mr. Jason Arias is, an, uh, is a teacher at the Ateneo de Manila Junior High School. Um, he teaches science, but at the same time also, um, he is known for his expertise and making use of games, online games like Minecraft, like Minecraft and making or and incorporating this uh, game games in, in teaching uh, science content. And, and he is here uh, to join, uh, he is here uh, to share to us his own experience and expertise in, in making use of these games or things that we usually see as quote and unquote distractions um, for our students. And he will be able to show us today how he makes use of them to engage and even to empower his students uh, to become better learners. So let's give our warm welcome to Mr. Jason Arias. Good day to all of you in the Tag Pros webinar for the month of July. My name is Alfredo Joaquin C. Arias. I am a teacher in science at the Ateneo de Manila Junior High School, and I'm also a Minecraft certified teacher. And today, as perhaps the Minecraft background would suggest, I was invited to give a talk on how one could use video games in the online classroom. Video gaming is simply an influential force in the media today. There is an estimated 2.7 billion gamers in the world today, and 43 million of them come from the Philippines. In fact, gaming is so rooted in the Philippines that in the Southeast Asian games that we hosted back in 2019, video games was actually there as an official sporting event, eSports. So if video gaming is this influential, how come people think that video gaming is a bad thing? Okay, A lot of people still blame the academic underachievement of a lot of our students to video game addiction. That's the prevailing stereotype. But I would like to raise a question. What if education could turn the system on its head? What if education could actually take a look at video games as a tool for learning and probably assessment rather than view it as a negative wherein you would have parents just saying, Kaka computer mo yan eh, whenever their sons fail quizzes. What if Kaka computer mo yan could actually mean that you were able to do a lot of things because kaka computer mo yan. So my talk today will be divided into three main parts. The first one would be what games did for me because I grew up with video games pretty much integrated in my childhood. I was lucky enough to have some uh, family who was supportive on video games and then I moved on to become a Minecraft admin after that. And then after this, I will discuss my gaming experiences in the classroom. So because, of course, I am really much into Minecraft, I, it didn't take long before I adapted it into my own science classroom. And I will just chronicle some examples that might be of uh, inspiration for you in uh, trying to see how video games can be integrated to the classroom. And finally, I will go into the next level. So the next level will involve me demonstrating Minecraft Education Edition. And this is very much the uh, tool that uh, is recommended to use in the classroom because it's not just using a very popular game in Minecraft, but it also is very well designed in terms of the lessons in ter and in terms of uh, interesting assessment tasks that we can give our students. So let's dive in. The first thing I would like to discuss would be what games can do. And this comes from my perspective growing up as a gamer. So this is a picture of me with my dad and here we are on the bed playing the Nintendo DS. So my favorite game at the time is uh, Pokemon. And pretty much this, this came about because I am an only child. And so as an only child, it is very difficult for me to find uh, playmates 
And so my dad actually ended up becoming kind of like my brother. And it started out with the Game Boy Advance. And he said, okay, uh, can, you t can you teach me how to play if I buy a Game Boy Advance? And I was so excited at the time. And yes, of course, he got his own Game Boy Advance. And from there, he got Pokemon Red. And so I taught him how to play Pokemon Red. And uh, pretty much this was our, this was the way I grew up. And as you can see, there are some interesting insights from this experience with my own dad. So first and foremost would be the fact that uh, I developed my own communication skills because uh, most definitely uh, I had to teach my dad how to play the game. And that was an interesting aspect of it. The next one would be bonding and collaboration because in this kind of instance, it's like me and my dad were just reading a bedtime story. However, the, the big difference would be that uh, we were playing a game wherein we're still waiting for our next chapters to be written. And so this gave me a very good opportunity to bond with my dad and to collaborate with him over an, a joint task that we were both passionate about. The next takeaway from this kind of uh, setup would be the fact that it established creative and strategic thinking. Because most definitely when uh, I am in a video game, you are strategizing what to do next. Okay, it's not static. You have to think, okay, how do you beat this boss? Okay, and then you will also communicate with your dad, okay, what's super effective against what? So creative and strategic thinking is something that could be enhanced when you play video games from a young age. And finally, leadership and initiative. The thing about this kind of setup would be the role reversal. Because if you notice, I am, if I could go back to my previous picture, here I am pretty much teaching my dad. And so... The young kid in this kind of setup suddenly takes on a leadership role to someone who is of authority, like my father. So in this kind of setup, the roles are reversed, wherein I am teaching, I am leading, and I am trying to be the example to my dad. And because of this, you could have opportunities to develop a lot of skills, like you know, it, it could build your, the confidence of the child, as it did for me. It could develop leadership and initiative when you allow your young kids to be put in a situation where they are being a mentor to a person of authority. So as you can see, video games really did enhance a lot of me growing up. And definitely this uh, only expanded further when I got into Minecraft. So uh, one interesting fact about me would be that uh, I actually used to be an admin in the Pinoycraft server. Pinoycraft used to be the largest Filipino Minecraft community, and we were famous for making Filipino structures. So one example of which would be this one. This, this is how the server looked like, by the way, the uh, middle picture. And then to the right, you have our rendition of Rizal Park. So this one was actually picked up by Rappler back in, uh, excuse me, back in 2015. So if you are, uh, if you are the social media researcher kind of person who would, uh, really find the article, then it's up there for you waiting. And then finally, I became it became a bit of my pastime in recent years. And so one of the things I built recently would be this Blue Eagle Gym re uh, replica from the Ateneo. So it's still very much in my life. And pretty much this experience in being in Pinoycraft exposed me to quite a lot of realizations. So first would be that it is an avenue for social interaction because being an only child, I'm actually an introvert. Okay, so that's the ideal combo, the right? only child na introvert na pa. So what more is the social where's the social life going to come from? I found it through video games because most definitely when you're an introvert, sometimes social media is kind of the outlet by which you could socialize because you have a bit of a safety net. You know that you are not in public, you know that you are not exposed. And so this allows an avenue to interact with a bit of security inside for some people with certain personalities. Okay, the next would be community planning. Because after all, in Pinoycraft, we were making things in a Minecraft world. We were building landmarks of the Philippines. And because of this, we were pretty much planning our community. Okay, who will be the builder? Who will be like the uh, town mayor, if you would like? Who will be the, the one who will hunt? and uh, get all the uh, coal, get all the uh, meats in the wild. So there's a bit of community planning wherein you can designate roles to 
to specific people. And aside from that, when you get into the building side of things, you could also plan, okay, this is how it should look like. There should be, for example, if you're building a castle, there should be a wall, a moat, towers, and whatnot. So community planning at a young age. Imagine that you are in a community with kids who are even younger than 10 sometimes, and then some could be in the late teens, and all of you are collaborating together over a game. And that is something that goes a long way in developing digital citizenship because you will know your role in a specific community. And the next thing I really would like to emphasize here would be breaking barriers of diversity. One of the interesting stories when I was in the Pinoy Craft server was when I was uh, I approached this person who was an Iglesia Ni Cristo member and he was building the church and I just wanted to help him out. And I said, you know, can I help you build this church? And he said, yeah, go on. It's okay. And so in that kind of situation, uh, I, I really didn't have any experience with Iglesia Ni Cristo, but I just wanted to build for the sake of building and because this guy was my friend. And the other interesting thing is that later on, another player joined us and that, was, and that player's name is Ahmed. So Ahmed is a Muslim. So all of these things considered, this will tell you that you can break barriers of diversity when you are put in a Minecraft server because after all, um, you, are just, you are just there for what you're passionate about. It doesn't really matter uh, what you believe in, what are your beliefs, but it's all about humanity. And finally, would be inspiring future careers because it is no secret that the people who I played with a lot in Pinoycraft pretty much got careers inspired by that experience. I myself am, a, am an engineer, but uh, quite a lot of people there. So there are some computer uh, programmers, computer science majors. There's, there's some who took graphic design, some who took civil engineering, some, of, some who took architecture. Okay, so as you could see, this pretty much was inspired by the game of Minecraft and our role in it. And so being in a Minecraft community would inspire you into careers. And I don't think that is the type of thing that would be, be, would be uh, enhanced through any other way. So gaming has so much potential to really make an impact in your life. And so with that, now that I could chronicle what games can really do, to me and to others, I could now talk a little bit about my application, Games in the Classroom. Now, when I tried to apply Games in the Classroom, I really would admit something, and that is I was a reluctant person in doing it. Because when you're a new teacher, I think alam nyo naman yun eh, pagbagong, pagbagong pasok kayo sa eskwelahan eh, ba? Parang ayaw nyo yung, ayaw nyo yung parang sobrang radical. Okay, you just want to be professional, you want to be serious, Okay, and then maybe later on you could experiment. But, you know, eventually I realized that, you know, the students could actually easily search up through the internet the things that I did in Minecraft. And so I realized later on that it's pointless to keep hiding these things. And so I just opened my doors. And then eventually I tried a few things that are Minecraft related in my classroom. So let me give you some examples. The first integration of which that I did would be electricity. So in Minecraft, you have something called redstone circuits wherein you could pretty much um, make circuitry. So there are lights, there are levers, there are power sources, there are uh, wirings. So I decided to integrate it in our discussion of electricity. And I did it by making the students, okay, put three light bulbs there. And then the challenge is, I want you guys to make me a circuit such that if I destroy one light bulb, okay, the circuit will remain lit or the, the remaining light bulbs will remain lit. And so that kind of put the students in a situation, okay, paano natin gagawin to? How will we lay out the wires and everything? And so eventually, after some trial and trials and errors, they were able to accomplish that. And then later on, that's when I inserted the scientific concept. That is what you call a parallel circuit. And then I just pretty much did that for the series circuit, the series within a parallel, parallel within a series. So as you could see, that's kind of an assessment task 
Okay, I ask the students to make something, but in a way, I use it as a springboard into the lesson so that they will experience it firsthand before I introduce the scientific concept. And I think this is a kind of learning style that is very much suited to today, wherein it's experiential learning. Okay, so that is electricity. The other integration that I could really think of would be uh, horizontal motion. So in this kind of situation, um, I this is not Minecraft anymore. I actually play Euro Truck Simulator. And in Euro Truck Simulator, uh, the interesting thing would be, okay, let me just quick quickly press play. So I pretty much drove my car down the highway, okay? And then I told them, okay, now I would like you to time this journey, okay? So time the journey, and now I'd like you to compute what was my average speed, okay? And then I tried it again. This time, I remember this was American Truck Simulator wherein I crossed the Golden Gate Bridge, okay? So now compute for the length of the bridge, and then compare that vis-a-vis -vis the actual length. And then the next thing I actually did was, okay, starting from rest, okay? Starting from rest, like this one, I accelerate as fast as I could, Okay, I want you to time it. And then after you time after you time it, I want you to compute for my 0 to 60 acceleration. So in these situations, it's pretty much kind of an assessment, but I'm using a real life example which is driving a car. Okay? That is something that I I couldn't have envisioned possible in a traditional face-to-face -face setup, but because of the online setup, all I have to do is share screen or not share screen, I'll record myself doing it, and then pretty much tell my students to make computations. And then you could assess if they really understood the topics in horizontal motion. Okay, the next example would be free fall. So here I shot an arrow upward, and then I told them, okay, measure the time it takes to go down. And then once you get that, I would like you to now compute for how high it went knowing that gravity or acceleration due to gravity is negative 9.8 meter per second squared. So again, this is a kind of assessment task where pretty much I used an example in the game. I could do it either through the recorded video approach or through share sc or screen sharing in our Google Meet or Zoom. And then I will just ask them to compute. And my assessment would be, Okay, to ask them using the measurements that they actually take. So these are just some examples that allow me to do something that I would normally be able to demonstrate in real life. But because of the online setup, we found an opportunity to still do these kinds of demonstrations. Now to expand beyond my role as a physics teacher, I would now like to show you how I integrated it into something a little bit more important, formation in particular. This was how I integrated it into our discussion on sustainability when I made a reflection ahead of Earth Day or Earth Hour. Let me try to put it in terms that you might understand. Let's say that you are playing this popular video game. You spawn into this beautiful world with rolling hills and lush scenery, but you realize that you do not have a place. You go to the nearest tree and through your own physical efforts, manage to cut it down and collect wood. Your hunger also tugs on you and you go to the nearest animal that you can find to hunt it down. You need to cook this food and so you go digging in the near cave so that you could find something that could be used to heat things, coal. You keep doing this over and over again until finally one day you build your own dream home and you can live happily ever after. But is it really happily ever after? Look at the world. What happened to the trees, the resources? You've left it barren, and soon your dream house feels pointless. You've left the area with nothing, and you realize that you need to pack up your bags, leave, and start over again. It's sad, and it would be easy if that were the case in real life, that you could just keep going on to another place, greener pastures, new resources. But we have a problem. There is only one world that we live in. We cannot keep consuming irresponsibly 
and expect the earth to keep giving without counting the cost. The reality is, resources will run out if we do not care for our planet. So let's turn back the clock on our game. How can we reboot and live sustainably? Instead of cutting trees without control, why not plant for every tree that is cut? Instead of hunting the animals we see without control, why not develop responsible practices in raising animals? Or even better, why not explore ways by which we could grow our own crops so that we may recoup what we consume? That is what sustainable development means. We acknowledge that we need these God-given resources to thrive and live in this planet. And yet, we need to find ways to sustain them, to keep it going, for the future of both our planet and the next generations. This is what it means to be stewards of His creation, a mission we are called to fulfill in gratitude to the wonderful planet that He has given us. So I had to demonstrate, okay, what would happen if you cut all the trees, kill all the animals, um, mine all the coal, and all of the resources will be taken away eventually, and then you realize that you cannot sustain this, okay? And what can you do to sustain this? You have to make sure that whatever you take from the earth, you have to replenish. And this is where I could now insert a very complicated concept such as sustainable development. These kinds of uh, video game integrations could actually also make something impactful when it comes to the formation side and reflection side. And I could envision, for example, telling a story in this kind of approach. Okay, so that was pretty much games in my classroom and how I integrated it. So my takeaways from this kind of experience are as follows. So first, it led to increased engagement. It's something that will allow the students to just get in to the class and really look forward to it. And then imagine their teacher is playing the game. So that's an interesting thing in its own. And then they're actually invested because whatever they play, see me play in the game, they could actually compute and then it's tangible enough for them that, oh, what I'm learning in physics and, and science is actually something that is applied immediately. And my teacher just demonstrated it. And speaking of demonstrations, it's the closest to the hands-on demo because in an online setup, that's just simply missing nowadays, the hands-on demo. And so what this allowed me to do is to actually take the students into the video game myself and make these demonstrations of how science is applied in real life. And next would be to make the topics more relatable. So something so complicated, sustainable development, all of a sudden, I could find a way to relate it to younger students by showing them through the game of Minecraft what happens if you take out all the resources and don't replenish them. Now they have an idea in their heads. This is sustainability. And finally, overall, it just made this, the sessions much more memorable. A lot of the students last year told me that it, the most memorable thing that I did last year as a teacher was when I simply surprised them by screen sharing and then they were taken to this video game. They really did not expect their teacher was going to do that. And it was a pleasant surprise, made their day, made their term memorable. So that's that was how I integrated games in my classroom. But aside from my classroom, I also have to highlight some of the examples that were used in my own school. So one would be that we have a video gaming club. So Ateneo has a club called Game Breakers and this video game club will allow us to have students to critique video games. So this is about a story about my uncle. That's a video game that we critiqued. And pretty much we asked the students what makes the game fun? What makes the game not so fun? What are your comments about the visual elements of the game, the auditory, kinesthetic, and they could make comments through something like a Padlet like this. So this will allow us to instill critical thinking and to make the students appreciate all of the features in the game. Another thing would be that when the time comes for us to discuss this video game, 
in a synchronous session, the officers lead it. So we teachers just um, start off the uh, discussion and then they'll just take it away from there. So as you could see, this is a session that we did. Okay, the officers prepared the PowerPoint and uh, pretty much they're doing all the discussion and we're just integrating or inserting our own input. And it's a very lively session when the students are taking the lead and doing something that they are really passionate about. And of course, it's something, it's a bonus to them that their teachers are also passionate about this. And aside from all of these, aside from the video gaming club, in Ateneo, we also have sports fest, esports fest. One example of which would be this one, the Minecraft build battle. So in this kind of esports fest, the idea is you have to make something and then we will have our teachers judge it. So the theme that we uh, selected for this esports fest is about something that you miss in the Ateneo campus. So the students pretty much built the cafeteria, the Church of Jesu, the, uh, the wing by which they are based in, in terms of cluster. And after that, they, uh, we had the art teachers host a show and tell session. So they were able to present their work and they were able to get up the appreciation of their batchmates. And I think that was really cool that we could do that. So the other esports competition that we did would be Pokemon Showdown. So as you could see, we did some brackets, okay? And then we made the winners of each cluster compete against each other. So uh, the one consideration, if you do wish to do esports fests within your own school, would be the ESRB rating. So that's the framework we use because uh, we don't want the students to be exposed to video games when they are not yet of the right age to play these games okay because one thing that i will say is that we actually had parents who would uh, complain about you know the higher level games the mature games and uh, we we did have a bit of takeaways from that that okay whenever we select a video game it's not always about the most popular game but also the one that's most age appropriate for the student so we do have a stringent selection process and this allows us to then have a bit of safety when inputting video games in the school. So what are my takeaways from these experiences with the school? So as you could see, it enhances critical thinking because you're making the students critique and appreciate what each game is good for. And you allow them to take the lead in the discussion. All you have to do, okay, get the ball rolling and they will take it, take it from there because they're really, really passionate about video games and they really want to share their love for a video game. And finally, to retain the spirit of competition in a time of a pandemic, because sports, basketball, football, volleyball, it's very difficult to imagine those sports in a pandemic. But esports fests, as you could see, they are allowed to compete. The sections can battle other sections like in a traditional setup. And that allows you to have competition even in a pandemic. Okay? So now that I've shown you how I, we integrated video games into the classroom and into the school, we can now go into the next level. In this particular next level, I would be discussing about Minecraft Education Edition. And this is a very interesting new prospect because this one has internationally recognized lesson plans wherein you all you have to do is load this in your classroom. And once you load it in your classroom, your students could have quite the experience in playing the video game. And if I were to add, aside from that, there are also opportunities to have assessment tasks with this, wherein all you have to do is uh, get the student to play the game, okay, do these parts, and then submit an assessment task. So this is how it's done. Okay, so I am now at the uh, menu of Minecraft Education Edition. So it's a version of Minecraft, as I mentioned, that is really geared for education. So I'm going to show you some of the features that I have here. So when you go to View Library in Minecraft Education Edition, there are just so many lessons by which to choose from. There are so many subjects about science, math, uh, computer science, uh, language arts, history, culture, etc. 
So there are so many, even digital citizenship, which has really interesting modules on uh, formation related matters that are relevant in the uh, 21st century online world. But as a science teacher, I think the uh, demo that I could uh, show today would be the ones that are related to uh, my subject. So perhaps I could take a look at, uh, let's say, chemistry. Okay, I, mean, I could look at, uh, let's say, hmm, what's an interesting one? I'll just go for the chemistry tutorial because I think this is the easiest one. So when you ha when you select a lesson, you could just go for uh, create the world. And as you could see, the uh, lesson plan is pretty much here, the uh, minutes, difficulty. So just create a world that will create a copy of this uh, lesson world into your uh, particular, uh, what you call this, in your particular game or account. And here you are. Welcome to the exciting world of chemistry. Okay, follow the path to learn the basics. Okay, so Minecraft Education Edition has some blocks that are pretty much not in the uh, core game that are geared towards uh, lessons. For example, the element blocks. So you could construct elements like this. So for example, uh, this is an element constructor. Okay, so hydrogen is one proton plus one electron. So you could just go one proton one electron and you get hydrogen easy as that so you could get blocks like that and that's really cool one other thing you could do would be the compound creator so for example as you could see here try creating sodium acetate which is c2h3nao2 so let's take a look at that uh, actually it already has it over there so c2h3nao2 so let's take a look what happens if i put all of them together so let's go ahead see h NaO, and there you go. I have created sodium acetate. So there are so many interesting lessons that you could really draw from this particular uh, aspect. Okay, so I'll just show another one. So the lab table, um, this will allow you to combine things. So you could create a bomb, an ice bomb, by using four sodium acetates. Okay, so one, two, three, four. Okay, so what happens if I combine all of that? There you go. There's my ice bomb. Okay, so it's a lab table and there are so many, yeah, there's just so many things. So even the material reducer here, so the material reducer, you would get any block that resembles uh, something in the world and you could get uh, what is it composed of. So for example, let's get a block of uh, grass. Okay, what is a gra block of grass composed of? So I could put it over here and as you could see, uh, grass block has 15 carbon, 64 oxygen, uh, or rather, yeah, 64 and another uh, 6 oxygen. Then you have nitrogen, then you have phosphorus. So you could take a lot of lessons from here uh, in this uh, particular chemistry upgrade. So uh, yeah, there's uh, just so much here that you could do. And this is just an example of uh, one of the things that you could do in Minecraft Education Edition to explore such worlds in a very interactive form like this okay so let me uh, quit minecraft education edition for now um i'm going to take a look at other modules that i have in place so let me go ahead and view uh more lessons uh this time i'll go to math okay and as you could see there are lots of uh, aspects here so additional lessons let's go for area and volume because this one is something that is a little bit interesting so as you could see there's even a lesson plan over here and if you click assign or share it actually has integration to microsoft teams okay email ad and also google classroom so um for example this one actually opened google classroom in my browser and uh, from there you could actually share it as an assignment in your own particular world which is really cool okay so let me just create a world for now so area is equal to length times width. So as you can see here, um, this has an area of four. Why? Because two blocks long, two blocks wide, area of four. And the, the thing about this kind of thing is it's very visual. You could teach students about area and vol volume in a very visual kind of way. And the other thing that I find interesting here is that uh, you could have multiple approaches for one answer. Like one thing I could show you is this is an area of four, correct? And this is an area of four as well. But they are laid out differently because this is two by two. This is four by one. Okay, so you could actually have an assessment given to your students wherein pretty much you could tell them, okay, give me something in Minecraft with an area of four. 
okay? And most of them will probably go two by two, but some of them I'm sure will try the four by one approach. So this is a core aspect of Minecraft Education Edition wherein you have multiple solutions to one problem, okay? And as you could see, it's not just area, but also volume as well. And you can even go depth, something like this, okay? So volume is length times width times height. And you could very much see this. Uh, so for example, over here, let's just use a simpler one. So this one, okay, uh, length of two, width of two, okay, height of two. So two times two times two gives you eight. And as you can see, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight blocks. Perfect. Okay, so that's just an example of uh, math in uh, Minecraft Education Edition. And if ever you do want to take your students into this particular world, then uh, all you have to do here is to start hosting a world. So as you could see, I'm in my uh, teacher account. And if I start hosting, okay, let's say confirm. There you go. So you have a join code and you could very much share this to your students. So if you click share link, okay, you can actually email them, use Microsoft Teams, or use Google Classroom. So there's that Google Classroom integration again. So imagine, so what I could envision here, the teacher shares the Google Classroom to his or her students, okay? And uh, shares in the Google Classroom rather, and then over there it's just, okay, click this and you could get into the Minecraft world. As assuming that is that your school has Minecraft Education Edition. Okay, so let me just go ahead and uh, quit uh, this bit for now, okay? So again, view library, and I'm going to try uh, language arts, something uh, literature. Okay, let's go into uh, Treasure Island, okay? Okay, so here you have a series of lessons designed to uh, teach the uh, English language. Okay, so uh, my short adventure. So gather information about the character using point evidence explanation, build vocabulary, and write descriptive sentences. Let's give it a try. Okay, I haven't tried this personally, I will admit that. Okay, so uh, let's take a look at what, what do we have here. Okay, so first you have to get some items. So scavenger hunt. Okay, let me get task one. So this is a book and quill. So as you can see, a book and quill is by a means by which you could uh, take a look at certain things. And there are some instructions written out here. So find as many of these items as you can and be the first of your friends to return. Okay, so compass, etc., etc. And remember to also bring along your journal that, because this will help you record and chronicle things. Okay, chest number two, survival uh, adventure. So there are so many adventures here. Uh, press button to see island from above. And there you go. You have a way to actually view the island from above. Don't jump off though because that's not going to be pleasant. All right. So that's the start point. You go around and just uh, go take a look at what the world has for you. Okay. And the book and quill will actually allow you to chronicle certain things. So you could chronicle here. Uh, so it says here, as a ship's captain or cabin boy, you are charged with writing the description of the island for the nearest. Ship. Write down your experience of the island. What, what would you imagine, see, hear, feel as you journey to find the items, okay? And so let's, for example, I'm a student writing the output, okay? I'm just going to say the island across is grayish and conic in shape okay so once you have some output like that you can actually put pictures here as well uh, but i'm not going to do demonstrate that anymore you could press sign and you could enter a book title let's say um output scavenger hunt okay just for just as a, just as an example so sign and close so once you have this book you could actually export okay and once you export, that will actually export it as a PDF file. Okay, so scavenger hunt, JSON A. So this actually gets your book and quill output and puts it out as a PDF. And if you have pictures taken in the game, like screenshots, you could actually put it here as well. And now that you have a PDF, you could now actually ask the students, okay, the output has to be the PDF that comes with your Minecraft um game and this is actually what comes out so as you could see imagine this okay that was just a simplistic uh, demonstration okay but i hope you could see the uh, real potential here that why not use this kind of tool for 
you know, stories. You could make the students go out on an adventure, like an English class, explore, and then chronicle their adventures using the, uh, the uh, book and quill feature and even cameras. And there, you have uh, pretty much a very interesting and immersive way to do your next English classes. I'm going to go and save and quit. And by the way, this is something, again, that you could share. So imagine all of your class students going into this world just to uh, explore together, okay? So there's just so much that you could accomplish with Minecraft Education Edition. And uh, it's not just lessons, okay? There's even monthly build challenges, okay? So it really enhances 21st century skills. So you could see that uh, there are some challenges, challenges here like, okay, architecture related. So that's Minecraft building. Okay, the area and volume challenge. So that's what I was talking about earlier. And again, this is something that you could assign and share into your own Google Classroom if you do want to challenge your students. So Minecraft Education Edition just has a lot of potential. And I hope that you could take a look at the Minecraft Education Edition website and uh, take a look at the lessons and try it out for yourself. And uh, if your school actually has a Microsoft Office 365 account, you actually have access to Microsoft or Minecraft Education Edition. So just a few considerations, but I, as you, I hope that you were able to see the potential of this kind of platform when used in the classroom. And so all of these just simply show that video games have a place in education. I hope that the academe, or I hope we could reflect as teachers that video gaming is not always a negative. Video gaming can have positives. There are so many things that video games can do to really level up our way of teaching, especially in this online setup. And so to end my talk, I would like to end with one quote that is enshrined pretty much in our Jesuit mantras, and that is tanto quanto, insofar as. It calls us to use means insofar as they help us achieve our goal or to remove means insofar as they hinder us from our goal. And in this kind of beautiful quote, it is a call for us to be creative because pretty much it tells us if it's something that will make the students be better people, give them experiences that a traditional kind of classroom cannot, okay? If it's something that will allow them to pretty much be the best or be the ideal graduate of your school through the use of video games, then why not? So if there's something hindering you from the goal, if it's the reluctance to input video games because of the stereotype, then why not take a look at that stereotype again? Think about it and see that as long as you are meeting the learning outcomes, the competencies, the objectives, and making wonderful future leaders, then why not? And so please think about that. And I hope that you learned quite a lot from this talk today. And I hope that you will be amenable to using video games in your own classroom, but overall, I think it's still the teacher's call because as the previous quote says, whatever means will help you, especially in these kinds of circumstances wherein the means are limited, then why not? So with that, thank you very much. Hope you learned something from my talk today. God bless. GG, well played. That was a very inspiring um, talk and at the same time very intriguing and if you've noticed in our chats we do have some some intriguing thoughts uh, and and I, I believe that Jason is here with us if you've noticed we have recorded we have a recorded set uh, we Jason recorded his session because we were so scared that we might be cut off today especially with the rainy uh, with the rainy season the monsoon that we have but um, personally, Jason, thank you so much. I was very inspired with what you have shared. It brought me back a while ago, just to be honest. Um, we have a private chat here in StreamYard. And when Jason talked about Pokemon, 
um, every one of us in the private chat were talking about um, our experiences with Pokemon and how we're still playing right now Pokemon um, until now. I personally am still playing, um, and and I, I, uh, there are a lot of memories in there. Let's start with our first uh, thoughts here, Jason. Um, there's a question. Of course, we know. Let's let's try to differentiate, Jason. What kind of video? Uh, games are you advocating because uh, we have some comments here about uh, violence in in video games. Should schools make use of violent video games, or or is there something that you want to clarify on that so that um, we can make uh, set the record uh, straight, Jason? I uh, thank you, Jim. I uh, hope you can hear me. By the way, this is uh, working fine. Um, anyway, uh, I noticed that uh, yeah, in the chat there has been uh, talk about violent video games. But whenever we try to integrate video games in the school or in the classroom, uh, curation is important here because uh, actually, what before we push, even if the students really li like the game, we always consider some factors. So first is accessibility, if the game is accessible to a lot of people. Second would be uh, the uh, age appropriateness. So one big uh, metric of that is actually your ESRB rating. Okay, so we look at our uh, junior high school. Uh, what is the age bracket that we're dealing with here? Usually 12 to 15 or 16. So with that, you could have a gauge that maybe it is more age appropriate for certain games to be used in the classroom. And so definitely that's why Minecraft is the most prominent example in the uh, ones that I gave. Because Minecraft is really, um, number one, it's really rated for everyone. And number two, there's even an education edition out of it that really uh, streamlines it such that it is more viable to use in the classroom. That are actually legitimate lesson plans made by uh, top educators around the world for the use of Minecraft. So definitely the age appropriateness is something that we carefully curate. Uh, I will not uh, condone the use of uh, games that are not age appropriate for the particular students that we handle. Oh, yeah, lovely insight um, to that. And and one of our one of our um, participants actually, I just want to show it here. Our Riza J mentions that the word that I like is creation. I think it's very important that as teachers, you know. Um, Jason is with us here, but he's also part of our pioneers team of teachers. And he was here with us when we started talking about technology. And then, of course, we have a branch of, 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 of uh, worrisome notes about how too much technology can use this. Uh, those are valid, actually. But what I love about what Jason has pointed out a while ago is that teachers have, uh, teachers have the responsibility to curate. Curate, not just curate. Um, I think curate is a higher level, but within curation is also the idea that when we curate content, when we curate tools, we actually let them go through a very stringent process of evaluation. And those evaluations are actually aligned to the standards of our school. So just because, um, just because, for example, Jason is talking about um, computer games or video games or whatever, it doesn't mean that, like what Jesus mentioned, I think the key word there a while ago was Minecraft for education. Because one way or another, one way or another there are uh, video games that can be used for instructional purposes. Um, very good. Um, Gino mentions here, Gino here, shout out to Gino. He's the manager of Teacher Education Network. He said, we had each sports tournament in our school. It promotes strategy and collaboration. We have to know what the games are and explain to them that there are games that are not appropriate. I think that's a very good processing. What can you say about uh, the, the comment of Gino, Jason? Yeah, I agree that uh, esports, especially now in the time of the uh, pandemic, when you know it's very difficult to actually envision, uh, you know, the more physical sports. I mean, basketball, you need five players. Football, you need eleven. Volleyball, uh, you need six per team, diba? So, parang Mahirap to kind of uh, see that, but with esports, at least you are still instilling the values that you want to promote for a sportsman. Diba? You, you need to practice to get better. You need to work as a team in order to achieve your goals. Tapos, uh, parang actually, if you look at a lot of the esports, 
esports each sportsmen around there they're actually a lot of them are actually fit as well because uh physical well-being is also important to uh, maintain uh, because that also leads to improved uh, mental uh, mental health and performance when you are in the tip top shape so parang uh, i think that the quote there is a uh, sound mind in a sound body so something that is along those lines so i really would hope that uh, esports tournaments within the schools would be more of a thing and uh, who knows na baka magkaroon pa nga ng esports tournaments with among schools now what if uh, ateneo versus lasal for example could be not just in basketball but let's say uh minecraft or kaya uh, league of legends or mobile legends yung mga ganun. but uh, definitely esports has potential especially now in the pandemic yeah, so a sound mind in sound body in Latin, I remember that. Mensana in corpore sano. Okay, so that's a little Latin phrase for everyone. Um, a very interesting insight. Thank you, Gino, for joining us. Uh, shout out to Gino and, of course, Jason. Wonderful answer. Um, we talk about esports e games and, of course, we talk about technology. Um, infrastructure, equipments uh, being used. Um, with concern on accessibility, and of course, right, it's very dependent on the in infrastructure that we have. Um, Jason, in terms of, like, for example, Minecraft education, what computer specs uh, are required for this application? Or are there video games that are low, low tier in, in terms of, of specs? What can you say about this um, questions? Um, yes, actually, uh, the other thing about Minecraft Education Edition is it tries to streamline on Minecraft, so it's a little bit more accessible. Uh, actually, if only I could uh, share a screen, there's actually a website right now where you could actually see the specs for required for it. So uh, if I could just quickly uh, share this uh, screen, if that's okay with you. So if you could see this bit, um, kita ba? Let, 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 let's add. Is that the one? Uh, no, 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 no. That's the one. There we go. So I think you could see here that uh, yeah, for uh, CPU, you have uh, i3 and then AMD. Then at least 2 gig of RAM would be nice. Then 1 gig for... Actually, you don't need the full 1 gig immediately, but assuming that you will download quite a few maps, then maybe that will uh, help the 1 gig. And uh, Intel HD graphics. So those are just some of the uh, minimum specifications that you would need for this. And in terms of OS, um, I think it's pretty much engineered to work in even you know Windows 7, iOS 10, the common ones that we have. So this is what it is in terms of uh, accessibility to our learners. But uh, also, as I mentioned, it's actually also available in the uh, mobile. So as you could see, it's not just uh, PC or laptop, it's also mobile. Right. Thanks, Jason. I think that's a, a wonderful clarification. But not all uh, e-games or online games were are created equal. So, of course, it's very important. I think Jason pointed out a while ago that when we um, when we look at integrating e-games uh, in, in the classroom, uh, aside from making sure that they are aligned with, of course, with our lesson objectives, performance standards, uh, I think we need to look at into accessibility so that uh, no one gets left behind or that that platform or tool itself should not be a reason to give due, uh, undue advantage to to our teachers. Uh, no, not our teachers, but actually to our students. All right, <laughs> sorry. Just scrolling down the comments, I'm trying to look for some questions here. But you know, very interesting, before uh, we were talking about this privately, um, I play Pokemon Go. Actually, Pokemon Go inspired me to jog every day and to walk and go outside. You know why? Because I need to move so that I can catch Pokemon and I need to uh, move so that uh, the eggs, Pokemon eggs, gets to catch. <laughs> right? So there. Um, let's, look at this, um, let's look at this comment from Edrin Rossford. Um, playing Minecraft is not easy. Not all children can play that meaning it can improve the minds of the learners. You know, we have this um, spectrum, um, Jason. At one point, there are studies, quote and unquote, that would say, um, you know, Minecraft, I, video games because of addiction or whatever, uh, it sorts of makes learning, uh, it sorts of distracts students from, from, from the, the learning process in itself. 
And then you, we have this uh, other other spectrum that says, you know, because games are difficult, they actually engage students. They actually uh, give or, or push us the student to be more analytic. If they're working with others, uh, they, they become more collaborative. So how do we make sense or how do, are those two exclusive or are those two things that could possibly happen, but, but we need to watch out for? What's your, what are your thoughts, Jason? I think those are two things that uh, could happen, definitely. Uh, and also, one one key thing here is, uh, yes, I agree that not Minecraft is not really for everyone. That's one thing. And one of the key principles actually promoted in the Minecraft teacher course by Microsoft would be the principle of uh, multiple solutions to the same problem. So the, the thing that they always encourage teachers would be to look at the learning objectives. And then once you look at the competencies and objectives that you have to instill in your students, then the important uh, takeaway here would be, how do I now design the learning experience such that it meets those objectives? Minecraft is just one way to do this. But uh, if you are a teacher and you, you, can, you could design parallel experience, experiences to it, like for example, yung, uh, the electricity example that I gave earlier, um, where in, in one side of the class, I made them do circuits in Minecraft. But of, of course, there are not, not everyone's into Minecraft. So you could also simulate that using uh, online simulators. There's a FET simulator that you could find um, that uh, simulates how to build circuits in the same way. So those are just, again, just highlighting na multiple solutions, but you should always look at the learning objective and the competency and making sure that you are meeting those objectives. I love what Jason has pointed out, um, especially because we're dealing with students coming from different contexts. Um, Jason is actually telling us that, you know, when if you are in the classroom, your goal is to make learning more contextualized. And if you're teaching a lot of, of students, that becomes more difficult. But but Jason's point a while ago helps us to actually target for differentiated instruction. There is a pathway to learning, for example, circuit um, through Minecraft. Or there is also a pathway here, maybe on another table, where they work on, on the real-life examples. Or maybe you can even ask them to go through the different, uh, the different stations or, or, or or, or tables. It's called uh, in blended learning. It's called not the blended learning that we have right now, but the the, the real blended learning of online and face-to-face -face classroom uh, instruction. That's called station rotation. Uh, and 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 Jason has wonderfully uh, mentioned that uh, a, an example of doing that. Um, let's go deeper into the question. Um, uh, uh, there's uh, there's a quote here from Manolita Ramos Oligo. And I think this might deserve some 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 discussion for a kid with aggressive personality. So quote unquote aggressive, a kid who is aggressive. Um, video games could be a problem, says expert, since video games reward aggressive tendencies. So for example, um, because we're talking about Minecraft here, and Manolita pointed that out, Jason. Um, What's what's the deal with Minecraft education? Is that is that something violent or is that something that will promote ag uh, aggression or or are we or are we or will we continue pushing the idea that you know in in education we don't condone to violent games? Jason, what are your thoughts? Actually, well, first and foremost, Minecraft is, I think, about as safe as you could get because it's the lowest uh, ESRB rating possible. So, you know, and then uh, Education Edition further streamlines that. And there are also options within the game that would actually uh, minimize the whatever minimal violence there is. Like, for example, uh, no mob spawning means that uh, none of these... Uh, bad guys so to speak would uh, pop up and there's no more uh, combat so it is possible to de design uh, your experience in such a way that uh, you could really minimize and absolutely uh, remove the violent aspect of the video game and um, I think that it's uh, an important yung important key here I will really go back to yung age appropriateness because 
the age appropriateness is something that uh, we always have to keep in mind when we're design when we're choosing the correct tool for delivering our uh, objectives in uh, learning. And uh, aside from that, maybe also context of the students. So um, I think uh, when she mentioned about uh, the uh, rewarding aggressive uh, tendencies. Um, I think that's parang not all. It's not always the case. I guess, especially with a game like uh, Minecraft Education Edition. Uh, but uh, definitely, uh, if the student is noted to have that kind of, uh, I guess, psychological uh, input uh, about him, that context about him, that uh, he really has this kind of uh, thing about a certain thing, then maybe the key thing here is moderation. That uh, you don't. Parang not too much of a certain thing, not too little of a certain thing. Uh, as teachers, we have the uh, role, I guess, and also parents as formators to moderate the kids and just tell them what is the right amount and to make sure that uh, the students are still having a well-rounded uh, kind of formation as they grow up. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I, and I would like to add to what Jason has mentioned. I think it's important to note the negative uh, negative effects of video games. Uh, but because we are aware of the negative effects of video games, um, should we remove it? Should we not use I, I, I always love to use uh, uh, tools, a metaphor. Knife, for example. Knife. Knife. Because it could be used for, uh, for killing, does that mean that we remove the knife in the kitchen? I mean, it could cause accident or whatever, or or at some point, do uh, we rem uh, we 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 don't let those things be near little children, right? But but at some point, these little children, when they grow up, they have to learn how to use knife, for example, right? That's why you have plastic knife. You have, uh, you know, not knife knife, but something that they could work. It's the same with scissor, for example, like a plastic scissor, and then you'll have the real scissor when you grow up. I think that's a that that's a metaphor that I always uh, get to remember when we're talking about tools that are uh, that can be that can give negative effects, but at the same time give positive effects. I'm pretty sure that we understand each other when we say that in education, I don't think teachers are are that gullible in introducing. Like, um, sorry, my 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 knowledge of video games is stuck when I was in college. Uh, 10, 12 years ago uh, with, what's that, what's that again? Um, Dota or Counter-Strike. I've never heard of a teacher who makes use of Counter-Strike in the classroom. So maybe we're, we're, we're going too much, especially with the discussion. But we do appreciate the idea that there are, or the reality that there are negative effects. But I think we owe it also to give perspective, a wider perspective, Gino mentioned a while ago to big break stereotype of, of video games. I'm, pl I'm playing Pokemon Go. I know there are teachers who makes use of Pokemon Go to teach students map, maps and directions. Uh, Pokemon Go is not violent. It's just catching. It's just catching Pokemons, right? Uh, so I, I think we need to be more nuanced in the things that we say. But I think uh, it's very valid that we talk about the negative effects. Uh, those could give reminders to teachers. But we also want to give props, for example, to Jason, the likes of Jason, who are aware of this, so therefore they control. Um, another thing, Jason, does it mean, for example, that you actually let your students play for two hours or five hours of Minecraft in the classroom? Maybe we need to dispel those misconceptions, especially because we're talking about uh, video games, educational video games in the classroom. Jason. Uh, yeah, of course not. I don't make my students. Uh, no, I don't think it's reasonable. Actually, not just in video gaming, but like, um, in the, especially in this online setup, I think there's such a thing talaga as Zoom fatigue, diba? Wherein uh, you are just in a, in front of a screen for hours. So uh, as learners, the challenge has always been, uh, I mean, as teachers, it's been a challenge for us in this online setup to design experiences that are varied. Na hindi lang siya puro in front of a screen, but will force the students out. To see that to, to do things i think again i will go back to the electricity example ko. so again minecraft is integrated in the circuit building but we also have an option uh, not 
not video game related so pwede either way but then we also have other things in that electricity topic like um going around your house and checking the wattages and then computing for power consumption so if you have those kinds of experiences now well designed na varied i don't think you you will be in front of a screen for two hours or five hours uh just playing a game kasi yun nga, it's our job as teachers na they're in front of a screen so dapat varied talaga yung uh what you call this yung uh, experience nila all right thank you for the clarification jason i think that's a, we need to set the record straight uh in terms of those kinds and i love the discussion because um, even our participants are actually part, uh, giving out their, 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 or sending us their, their thoughts. So for example, let's look at, sorry, I was just want to run through. Uh, it's, I, I love reading. So for example, Gino says, uh, balance po talaga ang kailangan, conversations about temperance or, uh, as for aggressive personalities, how do we determine? Yeah, very interesting. I guess kung aggressive naman, kahit anong sitwasyon, kailangan tulungan i-handle. Right? Um, Wendy, uh, Wendy, we will look at Wendy's question later on. I'll just try to go back also. Uh, more technical. Um, from, from Adelina, Minecraft, according to my son, is... Oh, it's not show. Is it showing? I uh, there. Oops, it went up. Minecraft, according to my son, is really educational and fun. It requires analysis in some situations during the game, or he is always thinking. But I still impose limitation in terms of gaming time. I think that's very good. Uh, the very formation aspect, character development, and I salute. We salute Adelina, a good parenting style. Uh, on this also. Riza, Riza J, uh, Riza J is um, it's a friend, a friend of ours, all the way uh, from Taipei in Taiwan. I think video games can be a good option for learners. I can I can use it to differentiate the process, how students make sense or understand the information, ideas, and skills being uh, studied. I think the key word here from uh, from from Riza is the word differentiate. It's to give options. It's to give different pathways towards achieving the learning outcome. And also we want to give shout out to uh, a massive shout out to Director March Ballester. She's here with us. She's joining us online. Thank you, Tacro Speech, uh, Jim and Jason. Um, teachers and parents need to understand that games like Minecraft help kids to think critically, solve problems and develop, uh, and, and develop in them a degree of independence. Um, yeah, I think those are very wonderful uh, insights from everyone. And again, if we look at education, uh, let's look at LA. LA says, actually, what matters is essential skills that we need to put emphasis in the teaching learning process. We just need to use the right and appropriate tools for learning to happen. I believe that Jason pointed out a while ago, right, that Minecraft is a tool. And Jason actually says, if they're not into Minecraft, <laughs> don't use it. <laughs> because the big idea really is to engage them through something that they're, they're familiar with. Um, look for others, right? Um, Ryza. Um, very interesting. There's certain. Uh, there's a comment here from Ryza. It's not an online. It's not an e-game. Jason, I'm pretty sure I know that you know this. Because you're a game, gaming expert. Dungeons and Dragons is another game I've heard being used in the classroom. What are your thoughts about it? And maybe you can explain to our wider audience what Dungeons and Dragons are. Yeah, Dungeons and Dragons is a role-playing game. Now, basically, you will create your own character and then you will play with other people. And basically, my game master who will direct you through quests. Pero hindi siya video game per se actually. That's the interesting thing about it. Uh, to be honest, I actually play Dungeons and Dragons like siguro mga uh, t twice every month with my fellow teachers. Kasi it parang parang my story ka that you have to go through, and you have this uh, person personality within that story that you have to control. Uh, my certain skills, my certain stats and whatnot. So when you role play, the siempre kailangan mo mag acting, de ba? So kunyari kapag uh, you're sickly, you have to put this kind of sickly voice in your uh, own personal uh, speech while you're doing it. So my konting uh, ganun involved. Eh. So uh, aside from that, ba, you also have to think about 
your character, your motives. So when you think about uh, this character pala really wants to be a major mercenary siya, they, you have to behave the part when you're playing the game na parang uh, whenever there's a a uh, situation in the game that really makes you use or get money, the kukunin mo yun. So that, that's the thing I really like about Dungeon, Dungeons and Dragons, na the role-playing aspect. And I could really see na this is something that could be used especially for uh, yung mga people who do a lot of stories, yung mga classes na ganon. So I guess English. And maybe pretty soon, baka pwede nga gumawa ng Filipino version eh, para mag- magamit rin ng, ano, eh, ng ating mga Filipino classes. Eh. Kasi ang ganda, ng, ano, eh, ang ganda talaga ng uh, role-playing aspect of it. Right. For example, right, um, Dungeons and Dragons of Lorante and Laura style. Right? So deepening or, or ibong adar na undergo the adventure through creating your own characters in <laughs> I remember when I was in high school, it was so struggle. It was a struggle for me to read those novels. They're classics, uh, but it's it it could be a struggle. Um, some thoughts here that are coming in, Jason Tetris are applicable because they puzzle. Um, kasi siya ay puzzle nag magise pambata how to put different shape, uh, different shapes. Alan 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 Utlik. Uh, to be honest, I use the languages and cinematic elements of online video games for educational purposes, only especially in teaching theater elements. See, there's a lot of different application. There's one question here coming in from, from Joseph. Uh, it says here, good day, Sir Jason and Sir Jim. I know being an introvert is hard and lonely and alone. This is my question. Being an only child, so it gets personal now, Jason. This is for you. And your father is your only brother and playmate. What is your deep or what are your deep feelings in your past that you will not ever forget and treasure? Yeah, I really like that question. Because it's very personal talaga siya, going back to my experience. But I really appreciate that. Na yun dad ko kasi, ano siya, uh, lawyer siya. So medyo busy talaga yung fright frame of work niya. But he still made time at, when I was a kid to go home. And whenever he comes home, I would really look forward to those sessions na magpo-Pokemon kami. So he would get his Game Boy. And then, yun nga, when he gets his Game Boy, doon kami sa sofa o doon kami sa bed. Tapos, um, when that happens, uh, he's playing Pokemon. Tapos parang ako yung, ano niya, caddy sa golf na, oh, what is super effective against uh, water? They, I would say, oh, get your grass type pokemon to uh, come out and ano beat this guy so yung mga ganung uh, bonding moments that i guess uh, really helped me before but at the same time one one thing i really appreciated about those childhood uh, experiences noon is he ma- he made time for me and he went to my level and uh, related to me in video games but he also made it a point as part of his formation na uh, to moderate me in the use of video games. Na, um, I think when growing up, I may limit pa nga ako, may time limit ako noon. And then eventually it grew when I started to learn a little bit more on uh, how to moderate myself better. But uh, parang he tried to make sure, I guess, that when I was a kid, I got varied experiences. So I think that's a really good uh, model to adapt, not just for parents, but also for teachers that you are open enough to go to the, what What are the kids into? What do your kids love? Because they will really love you for that, eh, na you are doing some, you're making the effort to reach out for them. But at the same time, they will also appreciate you if, uh, especially later in life, na you are teaching them very important values such as self-moderation. This one, I, I want to pick up on what you've said. And I love that you, and thank you, by the way, for sharing uh, a little bit personal of your life. And I love that you pointed out about the idea of self-moderation. Uh, formation-wise, um, Jason has been mentioning about formation. Uh, for our colleagues out there, formation could also mean character development. Uh, when we talk about character development, um, and, and one of our, our uh, one of our, um, Gino actually mentioned one of our participants out there uh, mentioned that it, it it it's also helpful that we expose them to those kinds of things because in the end those those experiences that they have will teach them self moderation. I mean, like how can you teach self moderation to someone? For example, use of cell phone. You teach them to moderate how to use their cell phones, but you don't give them their cell phones, right? It's like teaching them how to swim but you let them go to 
the swimming pool. Right? I don't know if that makes sense, but at some point, I see the wisdom of uh, what, what Jason has mentioned about his experience with his father. And, and Jason pointed out, as teachers, maybe we can use those experiences, those things that, that our kids or our students love, as a way to connect with them. Since we're talking about personal experiences, can I just share that during my first and second year <laughs> in school, I taught grade one, grade two. I was fresh from college uh, with a degree in philosophy, <laughs> philosophy, and I was asked to teach grade one and grade two. It was so difficult, but I realized that we share the same language, and that same language was the language of Pokemon. So every time I go to my classroom, to engage them, to ask them, to make them recite, to make them ask questions. I always have a pack of Pokemon stickers, which I give them as a reward. I've learned that from games, gamification, right? Rewards, reward system. And that's only through Pokemon. So thank you, Pokemon, for letting me survive my first year as a grade two, grade one teacher. All right. Um, there are questions about Minecraft. Um, Jason, let's go back to those. Um, online, offline, um, what's the best way for us? Is there an option for offline offline gaming? Is there an option for online gaming? And at the same time, what do they need to access to access um, a Minecraft um, education? Yeah, um, the offline is actually available. Uh, one of the options of the game, you don't have to make a server you could actually get the map. You design the map na, okay, it has these uh, quests, it has these uh, parang worlds. Tapos, uh, you could download that map. And then there's an option there to share to Google Classroom, Microsoft Teams, or email. So parang you could have a Google Classroom assignment, say, oh, please visit this world. The output will be the, uh, as I showed in the demo earlier, yung book and quill na comes out in the game that you could export as PDF. So that ensures that the students actually played the game and that also ensures na ayun nga, they could actually do it asynchronously as well. So gaming in the classroom need not be asynch need not be synchronous na kailangan video call, demonstrate always, kailangan my server. You could also make an asynchronous kind of thing. It's very adaptable to that. Yeah, um, and someone mentioned actually uh, for for our dear uh, public school teachers, part of DepEd, who are making use of of Microsoft uh, Education 0365. If you have an 0365 account, maybe you can explore that because that gives you access to Minecraft, uh, Minecraft, uh, the Minecraft uh, Education uh, platform. So please contact. I know that DepEd has um, division or regional um, IT officers, ITOs. So maybe you could contact them and, and maybe request. And by the way, just to, um, well, um, advertisement, ta, uh, um, Jason is our uh, resident Minecraft expert. So please expect that there is something we are working on that Jason will be uh, working, uh, that Jason is working, uh, that, that Jason is planning for Tag Pros. And we will make an announcement in the future, but this is not the last time that you will see Jason, talk about Minecraft and inspire kids to become creative and, and to talk about sustainability, right? So, Rona May Tamaro. So, before, uh, I think we have a few minutes uh, to, to look at uh, our, uh, to look at the comments of our uh, participants. It's discipline and respect. I think it all goes back to what Maricars mentioned, values formation also there. Um, and and very experience of very interesting because a lot of teachers here are sharing their experience as parents right as parents so this minecraft is already used by my nine-year-old daughter she said minecraft is fun and exciting because she can build a house or houses she can make pet as she wishes to uh etc but for me it can have a negative effect because it could cause addiction Hindi na nakakinig kapag may sinasabi ko. so i set up time all right. So very interesting because parenting. So it might be good also that when you look at uh, when you look at video games, you might involve parents at some point or another so that they can help uh, in, 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 the, in, those uh, in those discussions. 
From Alan, I want to share my experience in using online games in my class since there are no Filipino version of online games. But I want to know if this scenario is allowed to integrate tagalized voiceovers in gaming procedures or as teacher to be the game master of such online games. Um, what? Oh, this is very interesting. I'm not quite sure, Jason, but this is a very interesting uh, using or, or, you know, dubbing, dubbing games. Maybe recorded once uh, in a uh, in a Filipino in a Filipino language. Is it something that can that is worth exploring, Jason? Yes, I agree that uh, I hope that we could have more of that. Actually, there's a bit of a preliminary version on some Minecraft Education Edition. Now, when you have this kind of uh, text there, there's actually this uh, reader that uh, just uh, you when you press it, it will read your uh, what you call this what you wrote. Uh, the problem is it's not just it's not yet as fine-tuned for our language, unfortunately. Uh, but definitely, somewhere somewhere down the line, it would be nice to explore this kind of uh, integration with our with Filipino. Um, and also, uh, for example, the reflection I shared earlier, you could make the situation in the game, but you could use your own voice over to have that experience or share the story in the Filipino. So I hope that uh, Filipino especially uh, would have more integrations with video games because if you look at it, it's also another form of media like music, like uh, photography, like uh, uh, films and whatnot. All right, Jason, um, this has been a very long discussion and conversation. It's, it's very engaging. It's very interesting. Um, Jason, as we end our open forum or discussion with you, um, what are your final message to our teachers out there as they venture on maybe for the first time with um, integrating or using um, online games or educational video games in, in, in learning and teaching? I thank you so much again, Jim, for uh, this opportunity to uh, share my passion for video games and also teaching. And I guess uh, I would just say that uh, this really comes from my own childhood experiences that I really benefited, in my opinion, due to the fact that it was integrated um, so early in my life. But I was also instilled the value of lots of values like formation, like planning, uh, like socializing, breaking barriers of diversity, and daming values that I instill. And uh, this came down to the fact that I had a very open-minded uh, set of formators, whether they be teachers or also the uh, parents that I had, or that they were, they allowed me to experience video gaming, but they also uh, made sure that I knew the uh, nuances of it, that I had to self learn how to self-moderate as I go, went on. So I think uh, to the teachers who are watching this, uh, maybe we could look at gaming, not always as a bad thing, because I think that's a stereotype that, uh, you know, uh, video gaming equals violent shooting, because yun, yun naman yun lumalabas sa news eh. But what if you take a look at the video games that are actually age appropriate for the child? What if you actually look at the video games that are also curated properly, that such that it's uh, something that is, uh, you know, um, appropriate for the context and interest of the child. So I hope that we can look at video gaming in a different light, uh, that it's not always, a, there are negatives that we accept, but it's not always a negative if you carefully design the uh, learning experience. So I hope that we keep an open mind in uh, the integration of video games. And uh, definitely, um, if you're a bit worried about video games, na baka hindi kayo the techie type who will get into it, um, I'm sure the kids would uh, love it if you make them lead the sessions from time to time. Kasi diba, in my story, I we had that role reversal na I was the one teaching my dad how to play. And uh, later on, naging teacher ako. So that's actually something that we could keep in mind as we try to see what video games can do to really enrich and uh, form our students. Wonderful and very fitting end to our discussion, Jason. Thank you so much. So thank you, um, Jason, for joining us today. On behalf of Tag Pros Education, and ZQ EdTech IT Solutions, along with our partners, the Department of Education, International Cooperation Office, Teacher Education Network, and um, the next series, we would like to thank you uh, for, for spending time uh, your Saturday afternoon. It's a rainy, I don't know if you could hear the rain 
it's just coming strong again right now but thank you so much jason and thank you to our wonderful um audience and participants um uh we have some teachers who are not able to join us but we do have a team replay mode for one week you can watch the wonderful insights and sharing of jason in terms of using minecraft and other video games for educational purposes for for improving uh, learning and student outcomes. So thank you, Jason. Please stay safe. And yeah, we're now ready to close our session. Bye, Jason. All right. So that was a very wonderful um, discussion, very engaging, a lot of things to, to talk about and discuss. And um, yeah. So tell us about your thoughts of, uh, of, of today on today's event. Um, as we present, as we ask you to do the evaluation form, the link is presented on the screen as well as on the comment section. So answer the evaluation, answering the evaluation form is necessary for claiming e-certificates. And of course, for participating in our weekly raffle ticket, uh, raffle draw, courtesy of our partner, co-presenter, um, ZQ EdTech IT Solutions, the developer behind the wonderful online learning platform that you've uh, that you've learned last week called Quizzly. So make sure that you do the evaluation form. Make sure that you follow um, Tag Pros um, Education uh, social media pages, ZQ EdTech Solutions FB pages, um, and make sure that you create your um, Quizzly uh, uh, Quizzly account. So where can you create your Quizzly account? Please make sure that you go to this website www.quizalize.com to create your free account let's show our love to zq edtech solutions by supporting um their 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 platform a very wonderful platform all right so let's just give them a sneak peek of of what's gonna happen on on july 31 it will be the last uh it will be the last uh session on assessment so on your screen you can see quizalize there um maybe we could show them on on saturday we will be welcoming back our first speaker on part one mrs jane kakacho on 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 july 31 on saturday next week mrs jane kakacho will be talking about authentic assessment so this is a deep dive on on authentic assessment and how we we can inspire students to make use of what they know or what they do. So Miss Jane Kakacho will be back. We receive a lot of wonderful feedback during her session and we are bringing her back to talk about authentic assessment. All right. So thank you everyone uh for joining us today. Um we're very much happy that you're still sticking with us even if the monsoon is actually battering our roofs or even flooding. We continue to pray uh, we continue to pray for for every one of us as we keep uh, keep ourselves safe at the time of the pandemic and with this uh, rain that is pouring down on us. Finally, teach your passion and be a Tag Pros Education teacher partner. Um, we will be we will we are showing some videos about our uh, own platform Tag Pros Education, and you we hope that you get to watch them so that you know more about our certain our, our own project also. Again, I'm Jim, and thank you for joining us today. Uh, keep safe, everyone, and, and make sure that you uh, answer our evaluation form.
as we transition to the new normal, we have left others behind. We need to reimagine and redesign our educational system with the collective effort of schools, sponsors, and TACPRO's learning management system and core of passionate teachers. We can deliver free education and champion the cause of our students. Together, we would be able to teach, inspire, and serve because TACPRO's believes that education is a right all children deserve.